guys and welcome back to Conitheria, where in this episode we're going to build the biggest redevelopment project in the region's history, so far at least. So grab a coffee and sit back while we turn a chunk of used to be industrial lots on the port into a massive, primarily residential development with costs running into the hundreds of millions. Now, if you are new to the channel, you are of course very welcome on board as we are building Coniferia, our fictional and highly detailed city skylines region, taking inspiration from New Zealand, Australia, Canada and the good old USA. And as always, if you enjoy my content, I would greatly, greatly appreciate liking, commenting, subscribing, enable notifications, all that good stuff as it does increase the reach of the channel and puts me one step closer to quitting my day job and living off city skylines and cup noodles. Yeah, okay, that was a bit weird. <laughs> Anyways, back to the episode. We are, of course, uh, kind of starting off where we left uh, during the last episode, uh, where we... Uh, place down uh, this massive baseball stadium uh, near the uh, harbor front of the city of Port Douglas. And during that episode, uh, we, uh, we talked about uh, making some major redevelopment projects here, as that's a very common theme around the globe in, in major developing cities. Uh, and what you'll see me do as one of the first steps, basically, is that I try to align uh, the maximum height of the buildings that I'm going to be placing. Because while I want this uh, development project to be very big uh, and tower over the, the baseball stadium and be a representation of the really high demand that the city of Port Douglas uh, is experiencing, then I don't want uh, the towers in this redevelopment project to completely tower over the existing skyscrapers in downtown. I sort of want the same height. Now, luckily, uh, the creator Smiley's, which I guess most of you know from the workshop, uh, has created these awesome sets of modern uh, condos, and they are part of the same. The, the set has the same aesthetics, which allow you to really create massive complexes placing them down i'm using the bob mod here to just remove some of the planters that are attached uh, generally i uh, like to uh, let uh, props that come with highly detailed assets stay but in this case since i'm going to be building on some really uh, tricky uh, waterfront property where i have to you know push the buildings really close to the edge of the of the um, of the of the piers the the keys um then i'd rather just have the you know i've just removed the props and trees that are a part of the asset uh, and then i'll have to detail it up myself basically and then while i'm just uh, aligning the buildings in these next couple of clips uh, i'd just like to uh, once again thank you guys so much for the feedback and participation on the most recent episode of uh, coniferia where we placed the baseball stadium uh there are two uh kind of concerns that uh, many of you commented on one was that the stadium might be a little too big for the city uh, and I actually do agree. Initially, I had placed the medium baseball stadium, but I scrapped that recording and started over. And I guess my reasoning is that um, Port Douglas is going to be a really big city. Uh, hopefully, uh, once again, City Skylines 2 might just completely ruin it. But ideally, it's going to be a really massive city with a big population. Uh, so since the jump from the medium to the, the large stadium is so substantial in this content creator pack, I've opted for the big one because I think it's more future proof, basically. Uh, something else that a couple of you commented on was that uh, while the view of the skyline is of course nice from the baseball stadium, and then the way I've angled it means that the big statue is kind of facing not the city, but some of the, the port areas and the industry there uh, and i do agree i i might consider moving it 108 degrees so that uh, there it, it it's angled completely different uh, because maybe in the end that's that that looks better but i i don't really get to it in this this episode here now back to what we're currently building i'm looking for another tower here that uh sort of fits the same aesthetic while not necessarily being uh, completely identical in style 
uh, and then I'm hopeful that I can just use the color changer mod to adjust a bit uh, so that it looks more like the tower we've already placed here in the corner lot. And the, you'll see the reason why, but I can spoil that I want to make like an overhang building that connects these two towers and then have uh, a passage underneath to connect up the parking. Uh, so I sort of need these two buildings to have the same aesthetic and I end up going for this one that we're seeing right now. And there's not much in the color scheme you can change, but I just managed to adjust it ever so slightly so that it has this uh, sort of a brown orange tone that the corner building also has uh, and i think that yeah it's a, it's a close enough fit uh, next up is basically picking this uh, this uh, long slender building converting it into po and then we're going to create sort of the bridge between the two buildings with this building and then we'll have the passage uh, underneath and in the end it <laughs> turns out looking pretty cool but it's also uh, something that really helped <laughs> our health, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but it really uh, did increase the uh, cost of this redevelopment for the developers uh, because it's it's definitely a bit of uh, something that, you know, it, it's really, uh, it, it's not something you see every day to have a building of, of this magnitude kind of hover above ground. Uh, it does really uh, require some very specific engineering efforts. Not that money is really a problem. Uh, this is a development of the uh, Questru development group. And yeah, they certainly have the cash to back up uh, a project of this scale. Um, I guess, unfortunately, they're as much an investment group as a development group. And when we dig through some of their finances, we see that they have uh, more than 40% of their investments in fossil fuel industries including a 23% stake in the local uh, petrol industry here in Coniferia, uh, which is a, a little odd given that sustainable development is the slogan that they like to brand themselves with. Uh, but I mean, the founders, they do look very trustworthy. So, I mean, that's part of the course, I guess. Uh, the development is a pretty uh, cookie cutter uh, for the uh, interior. So, uh, if you want to buy an apartment here, you can expect that the website for this development and the any advertisements you may see will include the word uh, luxury uh, about a dozen times. It's probably going to be every second or every third word is going to be luxury. Uh, in reality, uh, it's pretty much run of the mill interior, um, but you're going to pay for it anyways. So yeah, sorry for the rambling. And now with my obvious disdain for modern development having been cemented, we're back to the build where we are just uh, building this uh, passage underneath the uh, hovering uh, section of this complex. Uh, and uh, in just a moment, I'll start working on the keys. So uh, I wanted to uh, use keys or networks in general as much as possible for the, the, the harbor frontier. Um, because uh, I think it's, uh, it's I wouldn't say it's easier to work with than doing it all with uh, just with props, uh, because that's probably easier because it's so funky working with the water physics in the game. Uh, but one thing I do enjoy by using uh, networks as much as possible is that if I want to come back and change something up or I want to make adjustments to what I'm building, then it's just a little easier with the networks because I can use node controller, I can use move it, you know, I can manipulate nodes and segments to my liking uh, so that's why i i wanna i really wanted to 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 go for networks for this build it does bring some limitations and you will see me use decals and props uh for instance to cover up some of the the, the clipping that we'll see in the textures uh but generally i'm pretty happy that i went for for the networks even though the, the final look is a little less uh custom basically than if you were to just use props surfaces and decals to completely to create a completely uh, custom uh you know uh key here um but I, I do like the results in the end even though it's finicky to work with and with the, that covered and that said i think it's time that i shut up and uh, put on uh, the volume knob here instead and and turn up this nice tune so that you guys can uh, have some music with some uh, time lapse footage and I'll get back to you in a little while.
Now we are gonna wrap up with some uh, detailing of, uh, of this big complex and this is actually an area where I sometimes struggle not necessarily in, in uh, choosing the details to use but more the amount of detailing I do um, because I, I often tell myself especially when an area like this covers a relatively small uh, you know part of the map uh, I often tell myself dude dude chill count to 10 don't go too heavy on the details uh so it's something i'm i'm trying to work a bit on that because um you know you just gotta accept that unless you want to completely fry your pc even if you have like a nasa supercomputer uh, then it's uh, it's gonna be not impossible to have the same really high amount of details or level of detailing uh, everywhere on the map um, also in relation to uh, you know, the amount of progress that you expect to be making in your city um, because uh, it, it, you easily get caught up because, you know, you the area just keeps getting better and better looking with adding more and more details and striving for a, a more and more realistic look. Uh, but all that time spent is time spent on a relatively small part of the map and that's something that, yeah, that's something to be aware of at least that's something i try to be aware of that i need to know when to call it quits and tell myself okay this this area is sufficiently detailed uh it's not the most important focal point on the map you can move on now you can you can chill and move on um and the I guess the reason I cover this is that I've sort of had an idea for a while now to start a series where I uh, use mostly uh, vanilla assets uh, with mods, but mostly vanilla assets uh, to have a series that has a bit of a different emphasis than Coniferia. So obviously less time will be hopefully spent detailing because there should be less uh, detailing opportunities available to me. Uh, and it's not gonna be possible to make it look super realistic anyways, given that it's gonna be mostly vanilla assets. Uh, but maybe that would make it easier to have like a different format of the episodes where we can focus more on the story and uh, the different uh, people and the different investment groups, the different instances that are uh, within the region and how it develops. Um, anyways, it's just an idea I've been kind of tinkering with uh, because maybe having a series where we can expand a little quicker uh, and having less details would make room for other stuff basically and uh, make room for some more let's play ish episodes which i have done a few of uh, with fewer time lapses and i have enjoyed them anyways it's just uh, me thinking loudly so if you have any feedback or comments on that idea please uh, I, I really would love to uh, get some feedback on that so let me know in the comments i'll, I'll make sure to read it Back to the detailing, um, using these uh, special decals that are really well, they, they work really well with procedural objects. I can change the textures to a custom one and then I can start filling out uh, this uh, open area here. And due to them being procedural objects, uh, I can adjust the height perfectly so that uh, I can uh, make them cover corners here, even though the corners are sort of smooth, as you guys can see. And, uh, yeah, really allows for a great custom customizability, but of course it does also take some uh, some time to do this. Probably not necessary this step, but uh, adding a custom decal uh, decal sorry to uh, to the pavement uh, in in an area really just makes it stand out and, and feel quite unique. This is a feature I hope is going to be supported in some form or another in uh, City Skylines 2. The ability to to easily uh, change uh, textures um, for your uh, sidewalks without having to make it a you know citywide change uh, with your map theme. That would be really cool. I feel um, more detailing. And what I'm really trying to do is to reduce the complexity and time spent on detailing by using, uh, in this case, these pre-built, uh, planners that are fantastic. They already look detailed as they are. And the same is the case for these, uh, cafe, uh, they're actually buildings. Um, and they, you know, in, in, uh, in a minute or so, you've got an open square here with some nice planners and some decent cafes. 
this can all look better if you choose to uh, really detail it hardcore and build your own cafes and uh, seating setup, build your own planners. But in this case, I, I really want to experiment more with uh, trying to streamline my detailing process so that I can get more done in the same amount of time. Uh, this is a, a massive project and, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna need to uh, continue to refine our methods so that uh, there's a good balance between detail and expansion because uh, as uh, some of you longtime followers will know I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, you know being 10 episodes into something and then we we barely got a neighborhood place down because everything's just taking too long next up we're on to some road detailing here uh, so just uh, using these custom bollards that just look kind of funky but also unique and then i'll have to uh, go and, and detail the rest of these roads as well with a, a custom intersection marking tool set up placing some people spawners or rather uh, some uh, attractiveness effectors so we can lure more people in uh, so this place is going to be really busy uh, and now we are just trying to build like a, a custom um, intersection marking that i can use throughout this entire area to make sure that the design is streamlined and that it that it looks like something a single developer has built from start to finish um, and so they've been able to you know um, have the same design language kind of um, reflect throughout the entire development um, and uh, yeah let's get a bit of music going before we wrap it up guys i think that wraps up what we'll be building in this episode to uh, not make it extremely long um so yeah we finished up with some uh, some general detailing and just adding some uh, some greenery uh all of this is of course a, a work in, in progress but i'm pretty happy with uh, with how it all turned turned out uh restaurants a bit of shopping uh and uh, generally uh, just a uh, 
uh, I think a clever use of uh, already made beautiful planters from the from the Steam Workshop, which uh, just makes detailing uh, a tiny bit easier. Uh, so I've created a district, I've called it West Pier because I have absolutely no ma uh, imagination. So if you've got a, a better suggestion for the name of this area, then uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I mainly created the district just to track the population. I'm using the realistic population mod and these buildings really benefit from that mod because they at least try to accurately depict the amount of apartments or households in this case uh, that we'd have in uh, in these these buildings and as we can see uh, more than 1000 people actually live in this development so that is that is pretty damn impressive as a, a single worker which i assume yeah that's uh <laughs> that's the the boss all working alone uh, managing uh well in this case it's uh, ev charging i guess one employee would be okay for that <laughs> Anyways, people are really flooding in, and we are seeing some uh, some activity throughout, which is uh, which is awesome. And there's uh, of course plenty of room to uh, uh, continue development of this and adding more features. So uh, these uh, piers that go uh, around here are obviously uh, a very good spot for a marina of sort. Uh, so I think before we wrap up, we could just check if uh, I've got some uh, some proper ship uh assets to use and it seems that i do so let's just let's just place down a few of these quickly uh, oh this is a big one but we'll go with it this one is massive as well so i'll just uh quickly place down a few of these and then we can uh we can reiterate create something nice uh, a proper marina, I guess you could say, at a at a later time. But uh, I haven't really used any of my any of these <laughs> assets yet, which is uh, a bit of uh, which is weird, right? Water is uh, quite a theme in this region, so it is a bit odd. Let's just park some of these boats here. We'll see if we can have a spot for this massive one. So I guess uh, this person. Uh, can actually afford proper luxury and i guess i was a little harsh earlier because a development like this uh, will have proper luxury units of course uh, and i also want to say that everything can't be luxury because you need affordable stuff as well of course so uh, it was just uh me trying to be funny i guess um there's a, a, a south park episode that makes a bit of fun of some of these modern developments and the lingo that developers use when they create uh, redeveloped areas and try to uh, market them uh, towards uh, affluent millennials. Uh, I can recommend that episode, that's for sure. So let's just see if uh, if this covers our needs. We'll do like this. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. So that's, uh, that's all for this episode. Can't wait for your feedback, especially on the idea for a uh, less uh, custom heavy a series that's more focused on gameplay, managing the city and maybe some storylines. Um, and as always, if you stuck with me for this long, thank you so much. I uh, hope you all have a really nice day or evening and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.